And I'm Sean without a mug. That's him. Yeah. Him. Him. We're bare tools and bench I put together. You know, I saw a hashtag today. It was hashtag BS and BT. I was like, I don't know if I like that or not. Because am I the BS guy or am I the BT guy? <laughs> no, you're definitely the BS guy. There's no question. No question. Anyhow, we got a great show tonight. Don't we, Sean? We, you we know what? Before we go before we go forward, we got a lot on the go tonight. We got a lot on the go tonight. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. So you know, <laughs> our guest here tonight, though, is one of our favorite, favorite on-air personalities. And there's only one of two who really went out of the way to show support for what Sean and I do in the show. And again, what we do in the show is just try to lend support to an industry that needed some help. The arts and entertainment industry. So uh, our next guest, and I'll let Sean bring him on. It was a big supporter right from the get-go. And he had us on his program. And uh, now we're going to have him on ours. Yeah, so um, Sheldon McLeod uh, did the afternoon talk show at uh, 95.7. Um, I said it before, the thing that I always liked about Sheldon, his interview style, very non-offensive. He was always gracious to the guests. But one thing that he really did that I thought was great is he always had a segment at least once a week with musicians. And he did his part to you know, try to promote musicians. And I thought that that was very cool. So um, without further ado, Mr. Sheldon McLeod. Yes, sir. Let's bring him right on. He should be right there. There he is. Pretty there good. he is. Salutations. How are you, sir? I'm uh, still alive. Still here. There still you kicking. go. That's what you said. It. So <laughs> I was doing the intro, and I, I, I listen to your show all the time. I mean, one of the things that I liked about your show that was different than some of the others, uh, I always found you were super gracious to your guests. Uh, you never went for the salacious angle. Um, but at least once a week, you tried to do a feature or some sort of feature on local musicians or, or, or local music. Um, just talk a little bit about that. Cause I, I, I always look forward to, to when you did it. That actually started back, uh, probably in the first uh, few months of the show, uh, that started in 2014, uh, a good friend of mine at the time and, uh, embarrassed in, in some ways to say I haven't really been speaking with him for the last few months uh, but his name was Sh uh, Richard Julian uh, chef live and yep. we started doing this little segment about food and you know it was just kind of fun uh, and then then we got this brainwave that, hey you know what there's some connections here the, the food world and the music world not just because uh, musicians have to work uh, to pay the bills but we started talking to musicians about food where you know road food their habit eating habits all that uh, and then we kind of branched out and started to uh, you know get some bigger guests on to talk about this stuff and that was always at the back of my mind something I want to continue to do and then obviously made a connection with some of the musicians in town and some of the the guys and gals who were you know pouring their hearts and souls into entertaining people and I thought well let's put them on the radio and I, I think one of the most important things for me was to say I, I don't want you to bring your instrument I want you to talk because this is a talk show I mean right. music stations bring musicians in and say hey you know play us a tune play us something I said no I want to talk to you about the news of the day and I think it a lot of ways uh, people responded to that people like musicians felt like at least the feedback I got uh, they kind of enjoyed not just talking about music but you know, right. talking about the world that they exist in and that's a good point, you know, because uh, we do the same thing here. There's only been, I think, two guests uh, out of 120 interviews that have actually performed. And we were kind of shocked. It's like, oh, do you want to oh, – okay, play a song. That'd be cool. But it's it's true. Like, we kind of went from an angle – initially it was for history, uh, just to kind of, you know, not relive the glory days per se, but uh, mm -hmm. we wanted to help them promote what they were doing. But sometimes, yeah. it was, like you said, it just turned into a natural conversation. If we were sitting around the bar, the three of us right now, this is the kind of stuff that we would have a conversation about, I'm sure. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I, I I did make a point early uh, early on. This was a few years ago to try and get some of those stalwarts, those great maritime artists, on the show. And, uh, you know, I, I was lucky enough to get uh, Matt Minglewood to to agree to to chat. And you know, I don't know whether it was a bad phone line or too many years of loud music, but sometimes it's hard when you don't have that line of sight to communicate over the phone. So that that, that one was a l it felt a little clunky that day, but it was a really good opportunity to to speak with someone who's been around literally forever in yeah. the music scene in our times. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned uh, Richard, you mentioned Richard Julian. I actually grew up with Richard. Oh, I'm um, sorry to hear that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, we both feel the same way. Although the one, he did teach me 52 ways to cook a box of 
craft dinner. So that was kind of cool, uh, um, which comes in handy. Um, so there, to shift gears for a little bit. So I, I, again, I'm not some guy that, you know, is sitting here going, Oh, I love you, man. Like I listen to your show. Cause I, I my job, has me driving around a lot, the different sorts of things. Mm -hmm. There's a gentleman I'd love, I, I haven't had the opportunity to ever talk to you about this, but there's a gentleman that came on almost every day. His name was Bob. Mm. And you know who I'm talking about. And so people would come on and they rant and they rave and Bob would come on and the love that he had for you was so mm. heartfelt. And I just used to love listening to that man. Obviously he had a little bit of a hard go. Yeah. The way you handled him every time he was on was amazing. And if you don't feel comfortable talking about the connection, that's fine. But how, you know, what is it that kind of got you to, you know, not go, Oh no, here's Bob again. Like I, I just love when he called in. Uh, really it was, if somebody's going to take some time out of their day to, to participate, to, to step into the circle, I tried to make it clear that you're not going to get attacked. Even if you, even though I think you're way off base, or maybe if uh, I know from past experience that you're just trying to get people going. Um, he was a little different, a lot different. The fact that, you know, he was a veteran a man who saw a lot, a man who experienced a lot, a man who had opinions about what was happening in the world around him. But, um, you know, if you grow up in a situation where you have somebody close to you who struggles with addiction, you know, and if a lot of us can go to you know, somebody close to us or a family or friend, or we, we can relate to that story. Uh, and I've, I've done that. I've excluded people from my life uh, because of the choices that they made, the bad choices that they made. Um, I'm 50 years old now, and I would hope that, uh, you know, someone who has the courage to own up to, to be honest about what they're doing and how they're hurting others I, that you know i got to all the time in the world for people like that well and and i will say that every time he called you could i mean you showed him respect but it was to me it just seemed like it was the bright light in his day you spent time you listened to him you never shoot him away yeah. and i hope other people actually pointed that out to you if if, if they had ever heard it because i i just i really love seeing it or hearing it i i don't know the man personally never met him uh but as a matter of fact he called me yesterday uh, my, he still, he said, it's Thursday. I, I need to call you. And, um, he's, he's doing, he's doing better, but he's still, you know, obviously struggling. And, uh, he at one point was expecting to be evicted from his apartment. Um, and I was, I guess in a position with the last few shows to, I got uh, Peter Stoffer on the program and somebody with Vets Canada. And we talked about, you know, how people don't understand what someone was PS, PTSD is going through and how that presents and you know he this guy was able to you know get a lawyer from his psychiatrist he's not getting evicted he's not going to have to find a new place to live in the new year so i mean sometimes awesome. that stuff happens behind the scenes sometimes it happened publicly well and if you're ever talking to him again and he needs another couple of voices or ears to listen to feel free to pass uh, our, our name on because he Absolutely. just he's he's very he really really affected me in a, in a neat way because every time he called it was just uh, it was just a great call so uh, i'm glad that he's doing well Thanks for that. I'll Sheldon, you're yeah, on, on the air with those guys for how long? Uh, in years or? Yeah. Uh, started uh, 2014. 2014. was the first show. It's, it was uh, right after Labor Day 2014. And then obviously the last show was uh, November 27th. So yeah. I just want to ask you, because Sean and I have been doing this for like seven months now. Yeah. Did you ever find yourself in a situation with a guest on your show that mm -hmm. kind of went sideways you know i mean like, <laughs> like what do you do in that situation Ooh, um for the most part it, you know it's a gonna it's gonna be a 10 minute conversation so you know you can do anything you don't like for 10 minutes and kind of plug your nose if you have to um <laughs> I, I was telling uh, the story just the other day that um jerry d uh was one of those guests that whenever he had something to promote in the pr firm tried to get him on the show he was a horrible guest he was he, you could tell he had no love for it he wasn't doing it because he wanted to um and, and i'll contrast that with uh, for a while sirius fm got rid of one of their channels that they were giving new comedians a chance to perform on and they were going to just play old archive stuff from just for laughs and i called jerry d up and he was passionate about that and he wanted to talk about that mm -hmm. uh, but then the last time i had him on afterwards i said to producer matt um he didn't want to be on the show any more than i wanted him on the show today so let's just kind of remember that for the next time i was fortunate enough that you know i would never do something at the time but there were guests who just never got an invitation back 
That's fair. Yeah. So you never came out of nowhere. I mean, you were you went into the talk format, but you mm -hmm. have a you have a long career, and you're a volunteer firefighter. I I, I understand, correct? Yep. Yeah. Yep. But you have a you have a long career in radio. You uh, you're from the South Shore area. That's correct. Uh, that's where I live now. I was okay. actually first on. Uh, air in Saskatchewan. I was uh, in Regina and I was working uh, just fresh out of high school, not sure what I wanted to do. And as, uh, as the story would go, I was driving around in uh, delivery trucks all day listening to the radio. And it just so happened it was Peter Zosky. And, you know, uh, Morningside was just, I don't know if you guys ever listened to it when it was on the air, but that was just an amazing human connection. It was radio. And I thought, well, shit, I, this, that sounds better than the job I have now. That'd be awesome if I could do that. And uh, it, it turned out that I was able to do that. In fact, I was fortunate enough this year to win an RTDNA award uh, for the Peter Zosky award for an interview nice. I did with uh, Mark Long with uh, Cracked Armor. Uh, where he laid out in very sharp detail how the police were letting down their members by not believing them about PTSD. Mm. So in some ways, you know, that award actually showed up at the radio station just two days before I was done. So that, you know, kind of brought it all the way back around. So well, and I, I bet they felt really good about uh, having the going away party after that, because that's a, that's a great, great award right there. Yeah, they wouldn't let me take it. <laughs> so you took the microphone and well, you got something else that's though. awesome, you got something else. We talk yeah, we're good. Oh, sorry, yeah. good question for you now uh in terms of uh the future because i mean that was a long history there uh are you still interested in doing radio or what's gonna be next for sheldon mcleod wow um part of uh the future will be storytelling and w how that will look and what format. Um, I don't know that there's going to be an opportunity for anybody else to do what I just had six years to do. I don't know that it, if this company or any other company is interested in providing that much freedom to their employee or to a, an announcer, or a show host. Um, and I, I'm a, this isn't a reflection on what you know, the, the station that I was employed with is doing now, but you know, I, I, I don't envision anyone else quite getting that opportunity where it's you book the guests, you decide the topics, you go ahead and do it. So what's next? Um, a lot of people are saying podcasting. I mean, I give you guys credit to, you know, gather, what is it? 5,000 people have signed up for your Facebook page already. Uh, there's a need for these kinds of conversations. And there's a, if, if nothing else, I've learned in the last few weeks uh, that if you're genuine, you're, you're open and you're willing to admit mistakes and you give people the benefit of the doubt, People respond to that. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be confrontational. It doesn't have to be crazy yelling at each other. So, well, how, and, and how I love that. Well, I yeah. love that because when we started, the two things Dave and I, really it was just a way for us to have some fun while all this stuff was going on. Mm -hmm. But we wanted to be uh, a place where our friends could come and promote themselves and we wanted it to be positive. So we did any negative whatsoever. We didn't want it to be part of it. And, and I like what you're saying because even – even when you would be doing an interview where maybe it was a little edgy or the guest was wound up or you're dealing with a caller, I always found that's kind of how you kept it. Is that something that you purposely did and maybe talked about with your producer or was that just part of your personality? That's, that's just kind of the way I am. Uh, every, every time it went to that other place, I mean, early on, I didn't have a whole lot of experience doing it. And people who had, you know, many more years in the business would say, well, you need to do this. Or they said, uh, I, I remember one piece of advice was, if you, if you have a, an opinion, you, you stay with it, you never change your mind. And I thought, well, I know people like that. And I think they're idiots. People who aren't <laughs> smart enough to change their mind if they're presented evidence that shows them what they believed before wasn't true. So I thought, well, I'm going to do this on my own terms. If I fail, I'd rather fail on my own terms than, you know, succeed by someone else's. I had a, a boss at one point said, oh, you should, you should say this about Gian Gameshi. And he, he, you know, I can't even remember what it was he said. And I, I said it on the air. And then this woman called and said, well, you do realize, and, and she completely counter, uh, contradicted what it was that I was being told to say. And I thought, well, she's right. That was stupid for me to say that. I'm never listening to the boss again when he tells me I need to say this stuff. <laughs> yeah. So um, unfortunately, you know, some of those suggestions I had, uh, I could ignore the uh, advice and, you know, again, either fail or succeed on my own terms. And I think that's all we're all looking for. It's an opportunity to try to be genuine. And if it that's doesn't it. work, you know, it, at least you try. 
That's exactly it. Now, I, I have a question for you now, too, I guess, in terms of the boss. Were you kind of censored or was there certain things that you couldn't talk about or that you had to talk about? Was it, I guess, was your day pre, kind of your show going to be preordained to some degree or were you just totally no, free? No, it was the very little interference. And by interference, it would be, um, you know, maybe someone from Rogers is doing this. So why don't you get this person on? Um, and and in, in most in most instances, there was nothing. I didn't see anything wrong with that. I didn't do it begrudgingly. Um, so, you know, I pretty much was able to plot the day based on what was happening in the news. And that was what they wanted me to do. You know, to talk about what people are talking about. That was pretty much so it. You had mentioned there that, um, you know, you're putting the show together, you're calling the guests, you're booking them, which is, you know, uh, people don't understand what, they just think you're working three or four hours a day. They don't understand all the other stuff, right? Yeah. Um, but in terms of the guests that you had, um, you know, what, what in the run of a day, how far out would you be booking that stuff? And in the run of the day, like what would, what would be some of the touch points? Cause you covered a lot of things, right? You just mm -hmm. didn't cover the news of the day. Yeah. How, what, what would it look like for you to set that storyboard up and make that work? Uh, yeah. I used to say for every hour I'm on the air, I'm doing about an hour's worth of work ahead of that. Um, you know, just because that the numbers are around, it's easy to kind of give people a sense that, yeah, I was there for three hours on the air, but it was at least another three to four hours uh, getting ready for it. Um, I used to joke, I'd get home and my wife would say, well, who was on the show today? And I don't know, I'm booking tomorrow's show. I can't mm -hmm. tell you, I can't even remember who was on today. Uh, but part of that was because it's a huge beast that needs to be fed. You know, news cycles as they are instant. And, you know, I would spend, you know, a good part of, even in between guests, um, sending out emails or requests. Uh, the last couple of years were a little easier. I had people reaching out to me saying, hey, here's an idea, here's a guest, here's a potential uh, topic for you to take on. So uh, I used to jokingly say that um, Larry King would bo boast, I don't do any show prep. He would boast that he doesn't do any specific. Yeah, but the guy was always reading. The guy was always paying attention. And it, 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 that huge beast that I was a part of for six years uh, it was 24-7, seven, seven days a week. No matter where I was, something come across my phone, an email or a, yeah. a, stu a new story, and I'm making memos to myself, making notes. My Facebook's full of saved stories that I would say, okay, I'm going to get somebody to comment on this, or hey, this would, be, this would be interesting. Why don't we find someone who wants to you know, perhaps shine a light on that, give us some of their exp expertise about that. What advice would you give people like, like us, like, like we're new. We don't have a clue. We're done. We have, we don't do any prep work at all. Like, you know, like who we're talking to, Dyshawn, I don't know who you're talking to as well. Like, that, hey, Sheldon's gone. But so like, what's, what's advice could you give someone like Sean and I? I would say to be honest, uh, be upfront, uh, be genuine. Uh, people respond to that. Um, I, I think I mentioned this when I had Adam Baldwin on the show, just before it, it wrapped up. Um, I saw Adam at, uh, a bar in Bridgewater. Uh, this is, you know, everybody with masks, everybody socially distanced, the whole bit. Um, and he was telling a story about a song and where it came from. And he said, okay, at, at the end of that, it, it, you know, the crowd's laughing. And, and he said, that's a story nobody asked for. And here's a song that nobody knows. He said, but what I've known, what I've learned is that when I'm, op when I'm honest, uh, people respond to it. Uh, so, you know, brutal honesty can go a long way. And, and sometimes that means, you know, saying I'm hurting or saying, hey, man, I'm, I'm doing really well or whatever's going on in your life and just try to be upfront about it. Well, I'll be brutally honest with you for a sec. So we started this, uh, what was it, April 28th, Dave, was our first show. Yep. Um, so it started out of the port a pick yep. uh, incident. Um, certainly there was Jen Casey and I'm actually, I've known Jen's mother for years. So there was that, there was a helicopter crash. There was mm -hmm. a little, little fellow in Troy. It's just one thing after another. We were like, a okay, we got to do something. Here. A shitty time. Yeah. So we, we just decided to do this. And, um, every time that we went to reach out to the media, we were told we were caught in a, a bad news cycle. It's just too many things. So we never got any coverage. There was two people in the media mm -hmm. that gave us any coverage whatsoever. One was Tom Bedell from Q104. Love Tommy. And the other one was Sheldon McLeod. Ah. And I remember when you called us and that was uh, that was a great interview. Cause the thing that I really liked is mm. how much you knew about what we were doing. So it wasn't yeah. like some guy that was sitting there asking us, you know, just kind of doing the little filler things. You actually knew what we were doing. You spent some time on there. Uh, greatly appreciate it. Um, to Dave's point, 
is, is that something that you think you really need to do, really need to dig in, do your research before you talk to somebody? Or you kind of jam on it a little bit. Okay, I'll go back to what I just said. Forget everything about what I just said about that. No, really, um, it, it's about listening as much as it's about talking. Uh, the, the, the key to a great talk show host is to be a great listener. Because if, if you're so focused on your next question, you're not listening to what they're saying. The guest is going to give you something. Uh, I don't know if either of you have ever looked up Nardwar, the human serviette. Yeah. But that guy's research is bonkers because of where he looks for his information. He doesn't go to Rolling Stone magazine. He goes to a college newspaper or a radio station or, or, you know, a weekly where, you know, the chances of these people being asked something totally off base, totally out there. And that the fact that, you know, the guest probably doesn't even remember saying it. Uh, and if you go down that path, um, you know, th that's just as hard to find that information, but it can give you so much more. And that when somebody does offer you, you know, they, in, in a, in a passing way, they'll say something. And if what I would literally do is I would write down that word or whatever it was that they said that I thought was okay. They're giving me a, they're opening the door to something that probably they have no uh, real intention of speaking to. But if I go back to that word and I ask them about that, you know, there's a pretty good chance that it's going to take us in a direction that they weren't expecting. You know, and that's true because, I mean, we've done that before where it's, it's just, we're talking to, well, so many different examples, but it's on, you think it's going to be certain questions and we just touch on one mm -hmm. thing and you can tell what, when, when your guest's heart is passionate about something like that and that's what they really want to talk about because they've said, yeah. that's all the other questions before, they don't give a rat's ass, but is this, if we ask double up on one thing, because Sean and I don't know what we're doing, right? We're just having a conversation like we're at a bar, like a virtual bar. And when it comes out like that, and you're right, it's beautiful, it's authentic, it's real, it's, it's organic, and people, I think, really like it. You know, we never embarrass anybody on here. We never want to get into, you know, things that are, are off topic. And I appreciate what you said in the preamble. It's like, hey, ask me anything, I'll answer if I can. And that's kind of cool, right? But no, I like that. That's a very good piece of advice. Uh, David Lee Roth is famous for his interviews. Anyone who's going to interview David Lee Roth is going to get a fantastic interview because he doesn't listen to the questions. He doesn't care what the questions are. He's going to give you the answers he wants to give. So um, I, I just, I was going through all kinds of old YouTube videos after the passing of Eddie Van Halen, just so I could, you know, trying to refresh, you know, we all heard those stories about the brown M&Ms until we realized, well, that's a contract thing. You know, it, it's not just a funny story or an anecdote. It's like there's serious stuff in, hidden below the, the, the popular stories that get out there. And uh, one of the first times I spoke to uh, Miles Goodwin from, from April Wine was, you know, a friend of mine who's in a bunch of bands said, oh, I saw them playing back in the day and they were playing in the at the arena in Bridgewater but they were playing under a different name they were playing under the name of prism and it's yeah. like uh, no <laughs> that's not what <laughs> happened people people's memories sometimes uh don't really kind of add up to the facts so you know uh, there was a it, different it, prism in Halifax so at one time yeah, there was a band yeah, called prism. it wasn't not the yeah. real prism you know the, the band yeah no it wasn't yeah, and, and that's why I said he thought it was he was in that band, but I don't know whether the Henmans were or somebody, but, uh, you know, one of those, somebody got the story a little bit convoluted over time. How was your interview and, with and him? you mentioned it. With Miles. Oh. How was your Miles interview? Oh, Miles was, he's always a great conversation. Actually, um, when, when Eddie Van Halen had passed away, um, you know, obviously April Wine was huge in the late seventies as that band was starting to take off. And, you know, and I'd said, sent him a message and I said, do you have any um, Eddie Van Halen stories? And his message back to me was no. Well, except that time we went moose hunting in Cape Breton. And I went, what? He's like, no, I'm just kidding. Man. I'm just, I'm just shitting you. It's like, you got me, man. Hook, line and sinker. Yeah. Maybe uh, maybe one day we'll have a Miles Goodwin story, but he hasn't come on our show yet. So uh, he will. we'll tell them that I'm Sheldon sure has. And, well, um, sure. and, you know, a kudos to you for talking about uh, Eddie Van Halen, because the day after he passed away, your yeah. show, you highlighted oh, man. a bunch yeah. of music. Yeah. No, I had to do that, man. That's, you know, there are certain opportunities, and I'm a fan as much as the next person, but uh, having a platform and an ability to do something and just to show the love and show why uh, – I, I felt well, that's it's the least I can do. 
plus, you know, obviously the family would get some royalty money because it, it was on a commercial radio station, so we had to track that. So. Yeah, yeah, and you pulled out some deep cuts too. I mean, you were some of the deep stuff off of Women and Children First and stuff I was listening well, that, that to. Was, it going, that wow. was the first Van Halen album I heard. A, a buddy yeah. of mine, and I, I've told stories in the year before about Kenny Buns, uh, he had, I think, three or four records. Uh, ZZ Top to Guelo, uh, there was the Women and Children First, and uh, there was a Tom Petty album. And, you know, that's kind of where, you know, we were – eight and nine years old uh, listening to these records in his, his basement and making comedy tapes on a little realistic uh, tape recorder, kind of playing <laughs> that whole world out. And, you know, that I've been a fan of those artists since then. And, you know, it, it's, it's heartbreaking that when somebody that talent is that, that talented is gone, um, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, we hope that we can all be remembered as fondly as, as someone like that. Yeah. So in terms of the guests you've had over the years now, um, and I don't mean to put it on the spot, but what was your favorite and your worst, or least favorite Ooh. guest? Uh, I think I already mentioned Jerry D. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was it was uh, really cool to get Lips from Anvil. Oh, yeah. um, Rich and I had a chance to get him on the show. Uh, there was a run there. We had a bunch of great guests like uh, Hollywoods um, and uh, Bruce. Is that the drummer? No, uh, uh, it's... Uh... Oh my God, he's like my best buddy now. Sorry, man. Uh, um, mustache guy. Yeah, yeah. Oh Barry Connors. Barry Connors. Barry Connors, thank yeah. you. Uh, no, they were great because they were they were playing We Were Rocking, so I got a chance to get them on the show. Uh, oh, Brian Vollmer from Helix. Oh my God, if you guys haven't, you guys had a chat with him, didn't you? Yeah, we yeah. did. Yeah. You, I double dog dare you to talk to him about Donald Trump next time. <laughs> Bring that up. I don't well, know if I don't know if you got down that path of politics because I sure didn't. Oh we did my so God! Funny. We oh, called yeah. Brian pretty... and he was like, "Yeah, um, I can't go on video. He was having some dental work or something, but I'll do I'll do an audio video." So it was like, yeah. "No problem." So I'm talking to him. He sends me like eight phone numbers, <laughs> and Dave yeah. and I are driving back from Windsor, and we get the one, and he's yeah. like, "Yeah, man, yeah, man." Yeah. Anyway, he gets on there. What a pro! I was just like, the lights came on, and bam, there he was. And he told yeah. some amazing stories. They were just in the process of doing a video the next day for okay. one of their new tunes, yeah. and uh, we were the we were the first scoop of that. It was pretty cool. Perfect, perfect. No, there, I like I said, uh, maritime artists. Um, I was supposed to speak with uh, Charles Bradley, and he was playing in Halifax. They had to cancel the tour because his cancer came back. Had a, an arrangement to speak with him. A, and that just never happened. Some of those are the interviews that, you know, you, you wished you could have gotten because it's, you know, some guy who has had a tremendous musical career and I'm sure has stories to, you know, to keep you up all night. Uh, Listen, but for me, it was Peter Edger. So that was the one that broke my heart the most. Like, we actually couldn't get Peter Edger on the show. That broke my heart because he was yeah, uh, from, yeah. from drama uh, and, uh, in, well, the Edger band. And he, he had some success yeah. out in BC. He played my high school graduation in Is that right? So you know what I'm talking about. Like he was, yep. it was he and Jackie Smith that were probably the two. Uh, Dave Roberts, maybe. Well, there, it goes on and on and on. But there's a couple of people who were real mentors to Sean and I. And Peter was one of them for sure. Like we we started our musical career in '87, and we started mm. touring back and up drama. Yeah. Uh, and it was and it, it was just such a tragic loss you know, for him not to be in the show because he was, you know, I get just one of our our big, you know, we were his biggest fans. And, you know, it just yeah. we really truly were right. I got. I had the opportunity uh, a few years ago to get some of the guys from. Uh, uh, oh, 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 yeah, yeah, no, no. Um, I'll think of their band I name. See I see you. I yeah. see you. Um, and Blaine Tenard, what an amazing musician. Uh, they were doing a bit of a reunion kind of after after the years. I played right. in bars as a, as a DJ for a whole bunch of years and got to meet a bunch of these guys, and um, they were just fantastically talented and just a funny a fun bunch of guys uh on stage and off and when it you know got them into the studio and that was that was quite a thrill for me and for i guess you know people who remembered the band and you know that's that's the sucky part about this whole you know coronavirus and, and the lockdown is that we're all missing out the chance to be in the same room and to experience live music which you know i always had a passion for that and it's unfortunate yeah, for that, sure you know, you guys are doing a great thing by keeping these stories going, which mm. which is amazing for you know people to take that stroll down memory memory lane. Even if you know your story might be a little different than mine, if we both had the same thing. Well, and I mean, one of the things that we've tried to do too, though, is is 
not be inclusive. We've tried to really involve anybody that wants to come on that wants to talk about music, acting, tiddlywinks, whatever. I mean, if this is just a place where people can come, know that it's not negative. Mm -hmm. um, if they've got something to promote, we want to promote it and help them promote it. And um, I, I, I think that's sort of kind of been resonating and it, hopefully we can, we can keep going with that because it's, uh, it's a lot of fun to do. Well, uh, you can tell. You can tell you guys are enjoying it and that's half the battle. You know, uh, as they say, interested is interesting. And if, if people are interested in what they're saying and what, the, what they're talking about, if you happen to be the fly on the wall listening in, that's interesting. So, you know, yeah. that's, that's part of the secret of the success is just never be boring. <laughs> but it's more you know what it's funny because we didn't know part of it was like we're musicians first so that's who we, we kind of gravitated towards with our friends and our mentors and whatever and to give them maybe give them back 15 minutes of fame while well, it ends up being 40 minutes or an hour or whatever the hell it is uh give them that little opportunity to you know to hear the accolades praise upon them because this is you know that was kind of a musician's soul they need to be entertaining or or feel important but it kind of went yeah. beyond that to music retailers to to actors to yeah. uh gosh we end up talking to andy zildjian who, who's a manufacturer symbol so yep. it just went on and on and on and on that public system and on our personnel for the radio it, it's such a great big scope and wide spectrum of people and we're not done yet we can keep on going now we, we, we kind of dropped the maritime part of it because but honestly uh there's it's a small circle here so either they want to come mm -hmm. on or they don't so we just come yeah. went on from there to canadian borders and now international borders so Anybody wants to talk about the entertainment industry we're in. Yeah, you guys are at a perfect time right now because people are open to this. What you're doing right now, I mean, even celebrities are Zooming with other celebrities just yes. to kind of get a chance to talk, a chance to get in front of an audience, even if it's just one or two people. Uh, we all need, we all crave that kind of human connection. And without it, uh, you know, you're sitting in a room talking to yourself. Good news, show them we're hiring. We can hire you. Yeah? <laughs> will you pay? How much does it pay? Well, <laughs> well, we'll talk I mean, about how, that off. How much will it cost you, do you mean? <laughs> um, but to Dave's point, to your point, Sheldon, we had an opportunity to interview Russell Javers a couple of weeks ago, who was one of the original members of Billy Joel's band. Yep. And, you know, the whole interview, I could not help but say, this is just a dude like me. Yeah, he's had a ton of success. Yeah. But what a, a beautiful person, some great stories. And he just took his time to, to talk with two yahoos from Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. And it was a lot of fun. And it was just, you know, we've been blessed that mostly everybody we've talked to has been like that, with mm -hmm. very few exceptions. Dave mentioned, you know, some of your, I guess, flame outs, which we won't revisit. But um, who might be one or two or maybe three of the people that you never got to talk to that you'd be like, ah, that's really the one that got away? Well, uh, as far as musicians, uh, anybody, uh, Kenny Shields, I really wanted to talk to him, uh, grew up in, in Saskatchewan and, you know, Streetheart was just a, a band that I knew and loved. And, you know, when he was starting to kind of reinvigorate his career, he was on that list, uh, didn't get a chance to, um, there were interviews with people like, um, there's a young man named Landon Webb. I don't know if you remember the story, but his uh, his mother was able to, under the Disabled Persons Act, uh, you know, basically keep him locked up. And he was a 22 year old man, and you know, I was able to, uh, through some lawyers, get in touch with him. And the fact that he was going to be on the radio with me uh, had the lawyers going bonkers, uh, and his parents weren't up at all happy with the fact that he was going to get to speak. For himself uh, so that interview got canceled but he also then was released from that custody and the province is changing legislation I mean something like that was an interview that didn't happen but the fact that it was gonna happen changed changed things and you know I I can't tell you how exciting it is to know that sometimes not getting to speak to someone is the best thing that could ever happen to them hmm. Sheldon, let me ask you this, uh, and we had the same conversation with Liz Rigney too, actually, uh, and, and so mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you the same question I asked her. Like, I guess what would be your proudest moment on air? I, oh, proudest, wow. Uh, there was, on the night of Hurricane Dorian, um, I had obviously been on the air since, uh, I think I started at one, and I was on the air right through till 11 that night. Uh, it, was, it was an ungodly long stretch on the air live. Uh, but at one point after, you know, the winds had started to die down that evening, 
uh, there was a woman who had called the station and the producer, uh, Josh Hoffman, who was helping that day, uh, said, this woman's got a, a problem. She said, her power's out. Uh, the doors uh, to the garage won't work because there's no electricity. And her medication has got to be refrigerated. So we put her on the air. She told uh, everybody what it was that was the going on in her life and like almost immediately we started getting people calling up and saying hey what give me the address if she's comfortable with that uh and and people actually drove out in that hurricane that night with trees down and roads soaking wet and the wind howling just to help out someone they didn't know that's cool. because that's just who they are and mm. you know without that opportunity and again it was you know live radio in the midst of a hurricane and yet people were willing to show the good side. Right and that, that was pretty rewarding. So we, we set this up and I know uh, it's Friday night. We so appreciate you being here. You, I know you've, you've, you've had some stuff to do. We want to be respectful of your time. Yep. Um, I just like to say, and we never got really a chance to do it, that uh, early days when we were doing this, like I say, you got us on the show. We got a lot of great feedback from it. Mm -hmm. um, it gave us, you know, just as much as us, interviewing Darby Mills, it gave us credibility because, hey, yeah, nobody likes you. Uh, you don't get famous in your own hometown to you make it somewhere else. And that wasn't happening either. But so I, I just personally want to say thanks so much for that. That was a huge pump of the tires for us. And, uh, yeah. you know, we don't take that lightly. So anything that you're doing, you oh, need to let us know. Absolutely. And we will yeah. absolutely promote it. Absolutely. We're all over like a fat kid on a smarty. Hey, delish. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, true, though. Like, we, we are Sheldon McLeod fans big time, you know, and not just from what you've done, but just because we are, you know, and it's, it, it's to, uh, to me and to Sean, I'm sure, too, it's just so obvious that just in our conversation here and your, and your, just your personality, like you're an authentic soul, and we're all about that here in the Barstool Fans Talk Show because this is what we want to promote, and it's kind of helping out our, our friend, you know, and you're a friend of Oh, well, hey, you guys, you, you guys, whether by design or by coincidence or, or just fate, you've stumbled into something that uh, people keep telling me, oh, you need to podcast, you need to do this. Um, you can't do it for the money and you can't do it just because uh, you're looking for something to keep you busy. If you're not interested in it, nobody else will be either. And I can tell you guys are definitely interested in getting these stories out there have you had Garrett Mason on your show yet? Um, you know what? He's a guy that keeps coming up and we've yep. reached out. We haven't heard anything back yet, but um, you know, I'm sure we will. We'd love to have him on. Yeah. No, he's just another one of those. There's so many fantastic musicians, uh, so many great performers, so many great people who right now are kind of struggling. And you know, yeah. my heart goes out to them that they can't get to do what it is that they love. So I, I can't say that I can, see this is replacing you know performing in front of folks but i think this is giving you something back too so you know that, that kind of relationship goes a long way man we know that there's yeah. changes coming you know like like into sean's he says this a lot it's true i mean the live entertainment system as we knew it is different is, is it gone no mm -hmm. it, it's it's just gonna be different so if it's gonna be live streaming if that's gonna be the new go-to platform for getting your fix of music, maybe dance in your living room. Well, you know what? We're going to do that. If it's going to be going out to the bars, we're going to do that too, whatever it takes. Uh, cause that's, cause we're in it. We're in it to win it for sure. Now listen to your point though. If you know some of these people and they want to come on the show, show you give us a little, you know, how you doing? Oh, you want know, to, you want a list? Uh, yeah. you got, you got to get Paul brothers on from global mm -hmm. okay. and ask him why he's such a huge iron maiden fan. <laughs> oh. Done. He's a, he, he's a huge metal head. I had him on uh, this past, just last year. And he said, I'll do it, but you got to play aces high. And I said, right, <laughs> you're in. And we yeah. did. We didn't do it the first break, but we did it back after the second break. So yeah, uh, he's one of those, uh, he's one of those cool cats too. And uh, no, I'm, I'll, I'll fire you all kinds of ideas if you want to. Please do. Yeah, please, please do. do. Well, I want to, uh, I want to take the time to thank you. Cause like I say, and true story, this isn't anything I but from straight from the heart, I have not listened to your former station <laughs> since you have not been there. And that's the truth. <laughs> I, uh, I was trying to tell people that, um, you know, no ill will. I got something, I got a lot out of it, uh, out of doing that for six years. And um, my first radio job at News 95.7, you guys mentioned Jen Casey. I worked with Jen Saturday mornings for the first little while. 
Uh, and she was a bright soul, a, just a fab fabulous human being, and really did get a... The last time I spoke with her on the show was about the helicopter crash and how the mm -hmm. community oh. was coming together over because it's such a small community and jen was a she was a captain and she was a communications direct she said i can get you one of the pilots one of the snowbird pilots she said but i'm not gonna i want to do this with you and she got to you know and we had to go down that path and say you know talk a little bit of sadness about something that was supposed to be such an inspiration so you know i just really had had to at least bring that you mentioned jen casey and i didn't want to leave this uh, without saying how much i i I respected her and was so proud of her as a captain that she got to to do that and you know you guys are are doing some great work here helping connect people and you know there's that's what it was always about for me was connecting so well keep up the great thanks, job thanks so much for doing this um you know it again i i'm glad we connected i i again i feel like i know you in a way because i listen to your show a lot but that's uh, true the that's interview true. Was great. it's just like you're, you're like a friend of ours because we hear you all the time that's right yeah, yeah. no that, that i i take that in the, the highest compliment could you could ever imagine because um yeah my first radio job was in 1989 got laid off from that job uh been been through this industry a long time and seldom do I get to say goodbye seldom is that afforded to people in that this kind of work where you get to say goodbye on your own terms so I'm, I'm quite happy and pleased that I at least got to put it to put it to bed that way so yeah. I don't think there's a finer way to end this segment than that that was uh, very well said my friend all right and you know what you don't so need I'm, a resume you're already hired if you want on you're in. <laughs> was, I supposed to, was I supposed to be drinking this whole time well that's what I no, that's just Dave <laughs> <laughs> I have to go. Keep it real, brother. Keep it real. <laughs> oh, that's all good. Man. Yeah. All right. All right. So, thanks, thanks so much so for much. being on the show. Please keep in touch with us because we want to help promote anything that you're doing. We're oh, I, I appreciate us. that. I'm glad to be one of the 5,000 strong part of Bar Stools and Fan Talk. Right thank on, you, sir. Right on. All right. John, Dave, thank you. Peace thanks out, a lot. Thank you. All right. all right. All the best. All right, guys. Bar Stools, Fan Talk. Music bucket list. <laughs>